Script supervisors, have you ever found yourself in the worst case scenario on set where there is an argument going on between the director and DOP over crossing the axis, also known as the line? Sometimes the first AD and even the star gets involved, even though this has nothing at all to do with their departments, as precious production minutes tick by and everyone turns to you for a definitive answer. Hello, I'm Daniela Sione, a 32-year veteran script supervisor who has worked with over 200 directors in international film and TV on budgets ranging from thousands of dollars to hundreds of millions of dollars. And today, I want to talk to you about how to navigate that AXIS discussion on set. First of all, let's start with what the AXIS even is. In filmmaking, the axis of action is an invisible fluid line between established points of reference, usually two or more actors, but it can include objects and physical landmarks that help orient the viewer as to the physical geography of a given scene. Now this line is fluid because it can move continually throughout a scene when the camera and or the actors move. The axis gets established by the way the scene is set up visually, often but not always in a master shot. But some directors don't even shoot a master, so in this case, the axis can get established by a simple glance in one direction from one actor to another, an eye line. The 180 degree rule states that if you keep all camera positions on the same side of this invisible line, the spatial relationships in the scene will be upheld, your audience won't be confused, and everything should theoretically edit together smoothly if everything else to do with the shot selection and continuity also work out, but that's a topic for another day. When you move camera positions to the other side of the line, also known as crossing the line or crossing the axis, you risk confusing the audience and taking them out of the scene or making an edit look wrong or the filmmaking look hacky. Okay. First of all, there is no right or wrong in art. And yes, I also consider TV art. So, I believe in tools, not rules. And as someone who has trained many directors and script supervisors and also worked on set at the highest levels of Hollywood, I have always operated on the basis that the axis of action is a tool, not a rule. And when used properly and effectively, which often includes crossing the axis with deliberate intent, it can enhance the experience of the scene for the audience by design. Furthermore, when you get into complex blocking and camera movement and multi-character scenes, there is often more than one possible answer to where the line is at any given moment because the line moves fluidly and there are often also multiple sublines within a scene. Boy oh boy, it can get really fun editing in your head, which is what script supervisors do all day long, and then communicating the possibilities and pitfalls of the line with the director and DP when asked or when issues come up. I actually love that part of my job, especially these days when we shoot with so many cameras and so quickly. It's a constant uh, mental dance. Even though audiences in general may be more forgiving of axis crosses these days, not understanding the 180 degree rule removes a powerful tool from the director's toolbox. So the complexity and fluidity and lowered audience expectations about the line doesn't excuse any director, script supervisor, camera operator, or director of photography from remaining blissfully ignorant of it. In fact, we should all understand it to the point of mastery so that we can skillfully play with it as a powerful concept in visual storytelling to convey the dramatic or comedic subtext of a scene. When I train directors and script supervisors about this tool specifically, I immediately then also train them on the many reasons we legitimately cross the axis to great effect as well. So those inevitable axis conversations on set are met with an understanding of fluidity and creativity and can be resolved quickly without the script supervisor being seen as the dreaded axis police. So how do you resolve these conversations? Okay, if there's more than one possible answer to uh, where the axis is at that particular point, but there's only time to shoot one of the two possible camera positions or eye lines, get the director to zero in on the moment and ask what shot they are most likely to be cutting from. And that usually ends up pointing to one clear choice. Look, if there's enough time, sometimes it's just faster to shoot it both ways uh, than to continue to argue about it. If the director is unsure of what to do, the purview then rests with the director of photography, even if you strongly disagree but have stated your case clearly. It's very important to understand this hierarchy as they both have creative positions with more power and accountability than you do. 
and as script supervisors, we are in the role of technical advisor. But if this does happen, do make a note for the editor about the choice in case you hear about it from the producer or showrunner later on because sometimes you do. And sometimes there are reshoots when choices like those get made, which cost time and money. And our role as script supervisors was created in the first place to save production time and money with our troubleshooting abilities. If there is one clear answer as to where the axis is, but we're crossing it anyway, make sure to ask the director if they are intentionally crossing the line in case it's an oversight. If they are doing it intentionally, they will usually also tell you why they did it and you can put it in the notes. And hopefully they're including you as a script supervisor in that access discussion in the first place, since we should be well versed in editing theory and are the editor's main representative on set. Side note, if you find yourself not being included in these discussions, email me for my talk on the fine art of director whispering. The worst scenario of all is when you are the only one aware of a messy eyeline issue that will make for a truly horrible edit. Oh, such as when two people are talking to each other and not looking at each other on a TV series where the established look of the show is generally not to cross the line. Believe it or not, this happened to me just a few years ago on a network TV show with major producers and stars. They were setting up a reverse angle on a two-person conversation, uh, which in the edit would have resulted in both actors looking camera left and therefore not looking at each other at all and confusing the hell out of the audience, AKA Axis Cross 101. I asked the director why he was choosing to cross the axis in this moment and his answer astounded me. He had no idea what I was talking about, despite being the graduate of a major film school. When I explained it to him, he said, look, it's my job to make it funny, go fix the edit. So of course I went to the DOP next and asked why we were crossing the line here and much to my surprise, he had no idea we were crossing it despite a multi-decade career. He actually said he majored in philosophy and to go talk to his camera operators, so I went to the A camera operator to explain the situation and he said, oh really, okay, we'll fix it. And then he adjusted the actors accordingly, admitting to not knowing this stuff because he was new to television with a previous long career in commercials. Completely flummoxed, I asked the B camera operator if he knew what I meant and his response was, not really, I come from documentary. So script supervisors, we are living in exciting times when there are more film and TV productions going on than ever and people are moving up quickly without necessarily knowing some basic things about the craft that we as script supervisors are expected to know. So where do you learn this besides the expensive way through trial and error on set? Some of us do go to film school, but many of my students who have, and a few of the directors I've worked with professionally who have gone to film school, still don't know the axis of action or many of the other aspects of visual storytelling to the extent that I teach it. My program goes through the visual and audio storytelling tools of a director, as well as coverage and access considerations in scenes with multiple people, fight scenes, walk and talks, conference room scenes, dinner table scenes, courtroom scenes, it explains all the editing and sound editing theory you will need to know to do your job effectively as a director or a script supervisor. It goes through the director's process of script analysis and how that gets translated to coverage, which is the shots they will use to tell their story visually and more. Multiple alumni of that program have told me they learn more from my four day program than they did in four years of film school. Plus, they had the confidence to go forward and work on set in a manner that put them at ease during these access conversations. And the people who didn't go to film school were able to do the same. My program, Am I Covered? The Art of Visual Storytelling for Film and TV dives deep into these concepts to train directors, script supervisors, camera operators, and other crew members who need to support and understand the director's vision on set. This program actually makes up the first half of my internationally acclaimed script supervision program, the Director Whisperer Training Program, which has launched hundreds of six-figure script supervision careers internationally over the past 27 years. Some of my alumni in script supervision then went on to successful directing careers, and that is inevitable given their focus and understanding of the director's process. If Am I Covered is currently available online, I will post details in the description below. If you found this talk helpful, hit the like button and let me know you want more content like this. 
For more tips on script supervision, filmmaking, comedy writing, and creative entrepreneurship, please subscribe to my channel. Have a great shoot.